In the shadow of Mount Tsukuba, just north of Tokyo in Ibaraki Prefecture, is a nice city close to the metropolis. I've been wanting to visit the town of Mito for a while now, so when I was invited by a friend to go to his local school festival in Chikosei, just a town over, I jumped at the chance to spend a weekend in Ibaraki. The fastest way to Ibaraki from Tokyo is via the Joban Line at Uno Station, which will take you roughly two hours. Though I came from Chikose, which let me bask in the beautiful mountain range between cities via the kind of rural Mito Line. The next station is Mito Terminal. Thank you for traveling with us and we look forward to serving you again. Mito is the capital of Ibaraki Prefecture and holds a rich history in the Kanto region. I started out the day visiting Mito Toshugu, a Shinto shrine with a gorgeous overhang that looked like it was painted gold. Enshrined here is the first shogun of the Tokugawa shogunate, Tokugawa Ieyasu. The Tokugawa clan had a major influence over Ibaraki Prefecture and Mito, which remnants of the fights between the early Meiji government and the rebels of Tokugawa can be found here, but more on that later. Afterwards, I walked down to Semba Lake. We're currently in Semba Park, which is a uh close to the train station. It's about a 10 minute walk, but it's beautiful. There is a fountain which stopped just as we were filming. So thank you, fountain. We appreciate it. And in the distance, if you can see, that is an art museum in the background which we will be exploring later. As it was December, the autumn foliage was just wrapping up. Walking to the other side of the lake took around 20 minutes and I got to see some lovely waterfalls, walk through some great scenery and even see some cherry blossoms blooming in December. There was even a small hill with a walking trail on it which piqued my interest. So I decided to go off the beaten path a little bit and explore the area more, something I love doing in Japan. The staircase that we uh, just went up, really cool. But, but, the, uh, unfortunately, I don't know how to focus. Fortunately, it's a private residence, so we can't go through the forest, sadly, at Sen, Sen Bar Park. But we can uh, continue on, hopefully, down again. Uh, seems to be a river down there. I can't, I don't think that's a, there's no bridge to cross the river. river. So I think we have to go back the way we came. Yeah, let's do that. On the western side of the lake, there is a cafe which have these lovely swan cream pastries that just taste so great. You'll see many swans and ducks around the lake as you walk around it and hear them as well. It was a nice place to sit and look at an old locomotive train and just relax after the short walk and even shorter hike. Behind the cafe is a statue of Tokugawa Mitsukuni. Beside that, another statue of Tokugawa Nariaki and his son, the last shogun of Japan, Tokugawa Yoshinobu. To get to this statue, you have to cross this lovely historic bridge that makes you really feel the history of the area as you walk across it. There's a lot to be said about the ideals of these men who are immortalized here. While most of it's been likely discussed at length in the past, by people much smarter than I, let's just say that these guys lost the war that they were fighting. From there, we headed to the Art Tower, Mito. Doying the skyline is an amazing titanium structure, which you can see for miles. I had a lot of fun on the grounds of the museum, until I tried going inside. Apparently they're closed Mondays, so I didn't actually get to go inside and see any of the exhibitions. That rocked. Lastly, I walked over to the Mito Castle ruins and discovered the Kodokan School. Built in 1841, this school taught the young minds of the then future rulers of Japan's prefectures. 
On the grounds are colourful trees and lovely walkways, and a tea house where I was able to have a nice chat with the old lady that ran it. The school is all that is left from when Mito Castle was destroyed after the Bolshin War. The entire area was the old castle grounds, but has since been turned into a park and an educational area about Ibaraki. Kodokan is kept perfectly intact from the days when Tokugawa Yoshinobu stayed there under house arrest. Inside are many artifacts from the era which tells you the full story of Mito and North Kanto's history. Even though most of the place is in Japanese, you can still see the pictures and feel the weight of what happened within these walls. All in all, Mito is a great city and a wonderful way to spend a day learning about the history of the area, taking in some local food and just being surrounded by nature. I was able to walk around all of these lovely sites in just one day and still take the train back to my home in Tokyo. If you're ever looking for a place to visit for a day outside of Tokyo, the quiet Mito city is one of the nicest places to go. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video on Mito City. I had a lovely time walking around and I had so much fun making this video. If you want to see more videos like this, please let me know down in the comment section below or over on my Twitter on the screen at the moment. I want to thank all of you guys who support the channel on Patreon. You guys are amazing and lovely and uh, thanks. So guys, I've been Dr. Dazza and until next time, Martin Air.